Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So for all those who are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our Telegram group wherein you can uh, post your queries, have discussions with your peers and you will get the access to all updated information about our upcoming videos. So let's move on to question number one which says what does it refer to? So we have to read these two statements and identify the concept which is being discussed over here. So the first one says it's a type of a derivative contract which is used for hedging risk. And the second one says it allows two counterparties to exchange one stream of future interest payments for another based on specified principal amount. So what they are talking about? They are talking about derivative instruments. We know derivatives are those which whose value depend on some underlying assets. We have options, we have futures, we have forwards, swaps. All of these are derivatives. So they are asking about a type of derivative contract which you can use to hedge against risk. And here, because interest payments are, we are trying to secure ourselves from the, because there are interest payments involved, so we are trying to secure ourselves from the interest rate risks. So the derivative contracts which can help you hedge this very risk are known as the interest rate swaps, because here two parties are interchanging the interest rate risks associated. So the answer to this question is option B. Let us start, try to understand about this interest rate swap. Now talking about the thing that why I am discussing this because recently uh, we saw that SEBI came out with some norms for mutual funds who are interested in investing in these derivative instruments. So if mutual fund ka jo paisa hai, wo interest rate swap wali derivatives mein invest hoga, to unhe kuch norms jo hai, wo follow karne honge. So SEBI came out with new guidelines for participation of mutual fund schemes in these interest rate swap which are a derivative product. So what mutual funds can do? They can enter into plain vanilla interest rate swaps for hedging purposes. I'll be discussing what are interest rate swaps, what are plain and vanilla interest rate swaps. So you here you have to understand that mutual funds can enter into plain vanilla interest rate swaps. Mutual fund ka jo paisa hai, wo is derivative instrument mein invest ho sakta hai. Aur ye mutual funds ka paisa yaha kyu invest ho ga in order to hedge yourselves from the risk. What is hedging? Hedging is basically a strategy wherein you are trying to minimize your risk or manage your risks in a better manner. So here hedging is a risk management strategy where you try to offset the losses which you might incur by taking an opposite position in the related asset. This hedging will be clear when I'll be explaining you interest rate swap to an example. So from that example, it will be clear how you are trying to offset the losses which might arise in any contract. So here, mutual funds can enter into the plain vanilla interest rate swaps and the value of principal in such cases should not exceed the value of expected existing assets which are hedged. So mutual funds ke jo bhi assets hai, uh, mutual funds assets which you are trying to hedge, the value of the principal amount in this interest rate contract should not exceed the value of those assets. Okay. So talking further, in case of participation in IRS through over the counter, so your mutual funds can participate in interest rate swaps in two manners. One is through over the counter, transactions and second one is where they are trying to use some electronic trading platform so if they are using the over the counter case for transactions then in that case whatever whoever is the counterparty that is the opposite party in the contract that party needs to be recognized as a market maker by rbi and the exposure to single counterparty in such transactions should not exceed 10 percent of the net assets of the scheme so, jo bhi counterparty hai, opposite party hai, jo is contract mein aati hai, wo market maker, RBI se wo as a market maker recognize honi chahiye, aur single counterparty ka jo exposure hai, wo net assets jo hai, mutual fund scheme mein, usse 10% se zada nahi hona chahiye. And if you are going through an electronic trading platform, which is offered by the Clearing Corporation of India, then this 10% limit will not apply in that very case. Okay, so why uh, our SEBI has come up with these norms? It wants to increase the interest, promote the interest of investors, 
are dealing in these securities it wants to promote the development of these investors it wants to regulate the security market so these are some of the measures which have been taken now a very important thing when you are we are reading about this step taken up by sebi you should be thorough about the concept of interest rate swap derivatives is an important part of your syllabus so you should be aware of different derivative contracts one of them being the interest rate swaps so swaps are of different kinds here we are going to discuss the interest rate swap interest rate swap is a derivative contract through which two counterparties agree to exchange one stream of future interest payments for the other so yahan pe aap apni interest rate रेट रिस्क जो है वो उनको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में एंटर करके एक दूसरे के साथ एक्सचेंज कर रहे हो हेयर यू आर एक्सचेंजिंग द फिक्स्ड इंटरेस्ट रेट फॉर द फ्लोटिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस सो हेयर दिस विल बी क्लियर व्हेन आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द एग्जांपल सो हेयर व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इंटरेस्ट रेट इज स्वैप इज अ इंटरेस्ट स्वैप इज अ डेरिवेटिव प्रोडक्ट व्हिच वी आर यूजिंग हेयर फॉर हेजिंग आवर इंटरेस्ट रेट रिस्क व्हिच एसोसिएटेड विद द mutual funds so it's used between companies to swap their future interest rate payments from floating to fixed or vice versa so let us understand this through an example it will be more clearer for the with the example so yahan pe aap aapko expectation hai ki interest rate badh sakte hai dusri counter party ko hai ki wo kam ho sakte hai to aap apni risk swap kar lete ho let us see how this swapping is done so uh, let's assume that there are two companies company x and company y and they make a interest rate swap whose value is 1 lakh rupees so 1 lakh ka interest rate swap company x or company y kar rahe hain uh, let us see about what the uh, what are the beliefs of company x and that of company y company x believes that the interest rates are likely to rise over next couple of years whereas company y which is currently receiving a floating rate return it is pessimistic about the interest rates that they will fall so company x ko kya chahiye what does company x wants it wants uh, to protect itself from this uh, and uh, to obtain the exposure potentially profit it aims to obtain exposure to potentially profit from floating interest rates in return that would increase if the interest rates indeed rise and what company y wants with a desire to secure risk protection against declining rate it wants to get get fixed return so come i'll explain this in hindi as well uh, so jo company x hai usko lagta hai ki aage aane wale years mein interest rates badh jayenge wahi company y ko lagta hai ki aage aane wale years mein interest rates kam ho jayenge to abhi company x jo contract pe hai wahan pe wo fixed rates earn kar rahi hai okay for example wo 5% fixed interest kahin se earn kar rahe hain और जो कंपनी वाई है वो अभी फ्लोटिंग रेट अर्न कर रहे हैं फॉर एग्जांपल हम अगर लंदन इंटर इंटर बैंक ले रेट ले ले लाइबोर ले ले सो so अज्यूम करें कि वो अभी चार परसेंट चल रहा है ओके okay? सो so ये एक फ्लोटिंग रेट है ये चेंज होता रहेगा सो लाइबोर प्लस वन परसेंट सपोज एक फ्लोटिंग रेट है जो कंपनी वाई अभी अर्न कर रही है अब कंपनी एक्स को क्या लगता है कि फ्यूचर में जाके इंटरेस्ट रेट्स बढ़ जाएंगे तो अगर ये फिक्स्ड रखेगी अपना इंटरेस्ट रेट फाइव परसेंट पे तो वो बड़े हुए इंटरेस्ट रेट रिटर्न इसको नहीं मिल पाएगा और जो कंपनी वाई है वो अभी लाइबोर प्लस वन परसेंट अर्न कर रही है ओके तो अभी हम मान के चले कि ये भी पाँच है कंपनी वाई को लगता है कि ये फ्यूचर में जाके फोर हो जाएगा तो अगर ये फ्लोटिंग रिटर्न ही अर्न करती रहेगी तो अभी तो इसको पाँच परसेंट मिल रहा है फ्यूचर में इसको सिर्फ चार परसेंट मिलेगा तो कंपनी वाई को क्योंकि एक्सपेक्टेशन है कि फ्यूचर में प्राइजेस गिर जाएंगे ये चाहते हैं कि हम अभी ही फिक्स हो जाए कि हमें फ्यूचर में भी पाँच परसेंट रिटर्न मिलेगा इसीलिए कंपनी एक्स चाहती है कि वो फ्लोटिंग रेट पर शिफ्ट हो जाए और कंपनी वाई चाहती है कि वो फिक्स रेट पर शिफ्ट हो जाए तो दोनों कंपनी अपोजिट पोजिशन चाहती हैं तो वो आपस में एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंटर कर लेंगे to exchange their interest rate risk so company x will offer company y a fixed return and company y will offer company x a floating rate of return this way they can hedge their interest rate risks so two companies enter into a contract worth 1 lakh as i have already told you company x is offering company y a fixed rate of 5% and company y in exchange offering libor plus 1% so to isko company x ko फिक्स रेट रिटर्न के बजाय फ्लोटिंग रिटर्न चाहिए था तो कंपनी वाई उन्हें वो ऑफर कर रही है लाइबोर प्लस वन परसेंट पे और कंपनी वाई को क्योंकि फिक्स रिटर्न चाहिए था तो कंपनी एक्स उन्हें फाइव परसेंट फिक्स रिटर्न ऑफर कर रही है सो द करेंट रेट इज फोर परसेंट सो वेन टू स्टार्ट विथ बोथ वर ऑन अक्वल फुटिंग नाउ लेट सी वॉट कैन हैपन इन फ्यूचर 
in future either the libor can increase or it decreases so let us understand let us take a case where interest rates do rise matlab x ne jo expect kiya tha wo sahi raha x expectation came out to be true and the interest rates if actually rise so when they rose the libor increased to 5.25% okay suppose libor increased it was earlier 4% now it increased to 5.25% By the end of first year of interest rate swap agreement, so अगर LIBOR four percent से बढ़ के इतना हो जाएगा, then let's see how company X and companies Y's profits or losses will be affected. So company X needs to pay a fixed return. We just discussed that company X is offering five percent fixed return to Y. So five percent of this one lakh is five thousand. So company X is going to pay company Y rupees five thousand. And company Y enter into contract to offer floating rate return. Okay, LIBOR plus one percent. So LIBOR four percent say increase. Okay, five point two five percent. Okay, LIBOR became five point two five plus one was also promised. So six point two five percent. Now company Y has to pay to company X. So company Y kitta degi X ko? जो बड़ा हुआ लाइबोर है वो प्लस वन परसेंट यानी कि सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वन लैख दैट इज रुपीज सिक्स टू फाइव जीरो सो वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ कंपनी एक्स प्रॉफिटेड बिकॉज ऑफ द राइज इन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स इट प्रॉफिटेड फ्रॉम एक्सेप्टिंग एडिशनल रिस्क इनहेरेंट विद एक्सेप्टिंग अ फ्लोटिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट रिटर्न वही वाई को क्या हुआ वाई को लॉस हुआ क्योंकि इंटरेस्ट रेट्स बढ़ गए वाई सफर द लॉस But still, why why will enter into such kind of a contract? It is because it is getting the protection it wanted from the first possible interest rate decline. अगर interest rate का अप जो इस जिस direction में move किया उससे opposite होता तो x को loss होता y को profit होता. All right. So the, if the interest rates remain the same, then the situ then these profits or losses will not come up. But because the situation has gone in favor of x. That's why he was able to profit, but still they entered into a contract because uh, they expect a protection from this very risk. All right. So now moving on to why, what is a plain vanilla swap? So talking about plain vanilla swap, plain vanilla is something which is the in the simplest form. So if we call vanilla bonds also, they are the simplest type of bonds. So here, plain vanilla swap we are talking. So it is the simplest type of a interest rate. It's the simplest type of a swap. So what is happening? It's the simplest financial instrument contracted in over-the-counter market between two parties. The there are several types of plain vanilla swaps. We can have interest rate swap, commodity swap, foreign currency swap. Here we are talking about plain vanilla interest rate swaps. So plain vanilla is the most commonly described interest rate swap where floating interest rate is exchanged for fixed. So अभी हमने example discuss किया. वो प्लेन वेनिला स्वैप का ही एक एग्जांपल था द एग्जांपल वी डिस्कस वाज अ प्लेन वेनिला स्वैप पे अ फ्लोटिंग रेट वाज एक्सचेंज फॉर अ फिक्स रेट ऑलराइट आई होप दिस कांसेप्ट इज क्लियर द आंसर वाज योर इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 इट सेस इंडिया हैज फेयर्ड रीजनेबली रीजनेबली वेल इन अट्रैक्टिंग द एफडीआई ड्यूरिंग द पेंडेमिक एज पर यूनिक टैक्स द इंडियाज एफ डी आई टोटल क्लाइंट ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट टू सिक्सटी फोर बिलियन डॉलर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विच वॉज फिफ्टी वन बिलियन डॉलर इन ट्वेंटी द कंट्री वॉज द वर्ल्ड फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट रेसिपियंट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फैक्टर्स सपोर्टेड दिस राइज सो वी आर क्वाइट क्लियर विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एफ डी आई एंड एफ पी आई इफ यू आर नॉट क्लियर यू कैन वॉच द सेशन विच वी टुक इन द मंथ ऑफ मे ओके देर इज वन स्लाइड इन द इन दिस वे सेशन ओनली वेयर यू कैन रीड द डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन एन एफ डी आई एंड एन एफ पी आई आई नॉट डिस्कस दैम अगेन बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड दैम इन द प्रीवियस सेशंस सो हेयर यूनिक टैड केम अप विद द रिपोर्ट वेयर वी गॉट एन आइडिया अबाउट द एफ डी आई कमिंग टू इंडिया एंड इट स्टेट्स दैट इंडिया इज द फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट रेसिपियंट ऑफ एफ डी आई सो डिस्पाइट द पैंडमिक वी हैव सीन अ राइज इन एफ डी आई वॉट आर द रीजन्स दे आर आस्किंग टैट सो लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट दिस फर्स्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट यूनिक टैट इट स्टैंड फॉर द यूनाइटेड नेशन कॉन्फ्रेंस फॉर ट्रेड एंड डेवलपमेंट ये क्या है इट ये एक इंटरनेशनल इंटर गवर्नमेंट बॉडी है जो आपकी ट्रेड इन्वेस्टमेंट डेवलपमेंट इन सब इश्यूज पे फोकस करती है सो इट्स अ परमानेंट इंटर गवर्नमेंट बॉडी विच प्रमोट्स डेवलपमेंट फ्रेंडली इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज इन दी वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी सो एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट डील्स इन ट्रेड इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट इशूज वॉट आर इट्स गोल्स इट्स गोल्स आर दैट हाउ इट कैन यूटिलाइज द ट्रेड द इन्वेस्टमेंट द फाइनेंसेज द टेक्नोलॉजी 
as the vehicles which will be used for inclusive and sustainable development in order to maximize your trade investment and development opportunities for developing countries as well so ye kaise trade investment ko use karke developed developed countries ke sath sath developing countries ko bhi develop karne mein focus rakhti hain and this uh, organization was formed in 1964 having headquarters in geneva switzerland as far as its member nations are concerned around 195 countries are its members including our india now moving ahead further it comes up with the world investment report so world investment report of 2021 has come up uh, which says uh, what have been our foreign direct investment trends in the previous year that is the 2020 year पिछले साल हमारे एफ डी आई के क्या ट्रेंड्स रहे हैं वॉट हैव बीन दी एफ डी आई ट्रेंड द रीच एज एज फार एज द रीजन इज कंसर्न एंड द कंट्री लेवल्स आर कंसर्न सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस रिपोर्ट सम हाई लाइट्स ऑफ दिस रिपोर्ट विच यू शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ इंक्लूड फर्स्ट द ग्लोबल सिनारी एंड देन वील टॉक विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इंडिया Talking about the global scenario, the global FDI flows have severely been hit by pandemic. So global FDI flows have been fall किए हैं pandemic की वजह से. Okay, uh, they have plunged by 35 percent in 2020 to 1 trillion US dollar from the 1.5 trillion US dollar in the previous year. Around 35 percent का downfall हमने देखा है FDI में. और ये क्यों हुआ है वाई दैट हैज हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ द लॉकडाउन विच आर इम्पोज ड्यू टू कोविड अराउंड द वर्ल्ड इट हैज स्लोड द इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सो जो भी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आती थी एफ डी आई वगैरह के फॉर्म में वो स्लो डाउन हुई है द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ रिसेशन लेड एम एन सी टू री एसेस न्यू प्रोजेक्ट्स ओके मे एम एन सीज वर नॉट एबल टू टेक ओवर द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स विच दे प्लान फॉर सो द ग्लोबल डिक्लाइन विच हैज हैपन इज क्यूड मोर टूवर्ड्स डेवलप्ड इकोनॉमीज एंड ट्रांजेक्शन इकोनॉमीज अराउंड फिफ्टी एट towards the developing economies just 8% because there have been resilient flows in asia developing economies accounted for 2/3 of global fdi which is up from the half last year so this i'll show you through the graph as well so world total this gray line shows the world total so from 2019 to 2020 we have seen a downfall as you can see this is the downfall and this downfall is around 35% okay now this green line shows the downfall in the developed economies okay and this light green is the transition economies so if we see this uh, decline in the, the developed economies and the transition economies this decline has been around 58% all right so this is the decline in to major jo ye decline aapka world ke fdi mein hua hai isme major portion jo 58% hai wo aapka developed economies ka hi hai then talking about developing economies the fall has been a very less in amount so ye jo yellow line hai ye developing economies ki fall dikha rahi hai which bahut minute sa fall hua hai around 8% ka vis-a-vis the developed nations okay talking about india with context to india india as i've already told you has done fairly well in terms of attracting fdi even during the pandemic आर एफ डी आई क्लाइंड ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट हमारा एफ डी आई इनक्लोज ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट बड़े हैं पिछले साल फिफ्टी वन बिलियन डॉलर्स थे नाउ दिस ईयर दे हैव इंक्रीज टू सिक्सटी फोर बिलियन डॉलर्स एंड इंडिया हैज बिकम फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट रेसिपियंट दिस इज स्पेशली इम्प्रेसिव इन अयर वेयर ग्लोबल एफ डी आई हैव एक्चुअली स्लम्ड यू कैन सी द रैंकिंग नंबर वन इज यू एस टू चाइना थ्री हॉन्गकॉन्ग फोर सिंगापुर एंड फिफ्थ इज इंडिया लास्ट ईयर इंडिया रैंकिंग वॉज एट इन टर्म्स ऑफ अट्रैक्टिंग एफ टी आई नाउ इट इज फिफ्थ so this is because of the rise which has happened even in the pandemic situation jab global fdi kam hua hai tab bhi india ka fdi bada hai it's worth noting now why has have we seen this kind of a rise ye rise kyu hua hai one of the most important reasons behind the rise is the pandemic boosted demand for digital infrastructure services humne dekha hai ki digital platforms mein hum kitna zyada shift ho gaye hain to globally bhi hamare infrastructure jo hamara digital infrastructure hai digital services hai unki demand badhi hai we we have seen major acquisitions in the ict sector the information and the communication technology hamare yahan bahut zyada brownfield investments hui hain bahut zyada acquisitions hue hain Uh, information and communication technology sector mein kafi many companies have acquired india's infrastructure of information and communication technology 
the report said that fdi in south asia rose 20% okay and out of this 20% the major growth which has happened is because there have been different mergers and acquisitions in india we have seen acquisitions in ict software hardware then we have also seen acquisition in construction health infrastructure energy some of the leading examples jo bahut zyada amount ki transactions hui hai is time mein these are the examples jio platform has been acquired by a subsidiary of facebook uh, investment in ict has been done by amazon in unilever india's merger with the glaxo smith kline healthcare india then acquisition of tower tar infrastructure trust by canada's infrastructure firm then there has been a sale of electrical and automation division of larsen and uh, turbo from india so these are major acquisitions bhar ki companies ne india mein bahut zyada acquisitions ki hain okay which is a brownfield investment what's a greenfield what's a brownfield i'll be discussing up in upcoming slides but there is a concern as well and that concern is that the announcement in greenfield projects have contracted jo scratch se shuru hone wale projects the new projects the unme contraction dikh rahi hai aur zyada se zyada investments jo aayi hain wo brownfield aayi hain jahan pe hamari acquisitions aur mergers hue hain the second wave in, in 2021 is affecting economic activities which can lead to larger contraction in 2021 the outbreak in india severely hit main investment destinations ye jo hamari main investment destinations hai in inko bahut farak pada hai jahan tak green field projects concerned hai jo maharashtra hai wo ek bada hub hai automobile manufacturing ka and karnataka is a big it's a bangalore tech hub so maharashtra and karnataka have um, seen a outbreak when it comes to investments attraction there okay which has exposed the country to production disruption and investment delays so ye area hai jo hamara majorly hit hua hai now talking about the way forward so india's strong fundamentals prove the optimism for the medium term as well so fdi in india has been on a long term growing trend and markets will continue to attract market seeking investments so hame expectation hai ki jo india ka trend raha hai वो अभी और इन्वेस्टमेंट्स अट्रैक्ट करता रहेगा स्पेशली आईसीटी सेक्टर में स्पेशली दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट इन आईसीटी सेक्टर इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कीप ग्रोइंग द कंट्रीज एक्सपोर्ट रिलेटेड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग विल टेक लॉन्गर टू रिकवर बट द गवर्नमेंट कैन हेल्प हाउ कैन गवर्नमेंट हेल्प टू पी सो देर आर प्रोडक्शन लिंक इंसेंटिव स्कीम वेयर सम इंसेंटिव सम सब्सिडीज सम एडिशनल बेनिफिट्स आर गिवेन इन ऑर्डर टू अट्रैक्ट दी मैनुफैक्चरिंग एंड दी एक्सपोर्ट ओरिएंटेड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन इंडिया so the government can provide them in priority industries like automotive and electronics which can drive our investments okay so this is the way forward talking about the difference between a green field and a brown field investment when you are scratching the business uh, from the very scratch aap ekdam base se ja ke investment shuru kar rahe ho nayi company khol rahe ho naya unit set up kar rahe ho that's a green field investment so where with green field a company will build its own brand new facilities from ground up okay so greenfield fdi in india is investment by foreign investor in fresh production facilities it's a situation where an mnc starts a new venture in india by constructing new operational facilities all right and brownfield is when you are merging with someone acquiring some firm it happens when com- company purchases an existing entity so brownfield fdi is investment made by foreign company in existing production arrangements an important form of brownfield is merger and acquisition by foreign mncs in india here domestic company will get taken over by mnc so we have seen major brownfield investments this time okay then this is the slide where fdi fpi differences are there you can just pause it and read it i have already discussed in previous session moving back to our question we had to identify the reasons for the rise so first and third have been the reason so answer is option c second increase in greenfield projects this is not true okay moving on to last question now which says as per says anybody or body corporate for the purpose of regulating investment advisors an entity granted recognition under investment advisors rule by sebi will be allowed to administer and supervise these investment advisors that are ias okay so identify the entity being talked about the entity which we are talking about is answer a investment advisor administration and supervisory body so let us see a bit more about this body 
Sebi recently came up with the framework wherein it talked about how we can administer and supervise the investment advisors. So Sebi recently issued the framework for them. And as per Sebi norms, Sebi can recognize any body corporate as a IAASB. Sebi koi bhi uh, body ko ek um, entity bana sakta hai as uh, jo ki aapke investment advisors ke saath deal karegi. Okay, Sebi can recognize any body. Kisi bhi body ko wo investment advisor, administration and supervisory body bana sakta hai. Uska kaam kya hoga, wo bhi hum dekhte hai. The entity, entity granted recognition under IA rules by SEBI will be designated as an IASB and it will be allowed to administer and supervise a IA. So, unko administer karna hai or supervision karna hai investment advisors ka. So, it will be supervising the IAs, it will redress the complaints, the grievances of the clients as well as that of investment advisors. It will also take the administrative action against issuing warnings and referring to SEBI for any enforcement action. It will be monitoring your investment advisors, getting the periodical reports, submitting the reports to SEBI and maintaining the database of IA. So, jitna bhi unka appointment, uh, supervision wagera concerned hai investment advisors ka, wo sab ye body handle karegi. So, all existing IAs have to seek membership of IASB within three months of recognition of IASB. Jaisi hi IASB se abhi recognize karegi ki ye body itte time ke liye as a IAASB function karegi. Uske teen mahine ke andar andar saare in, jo existing investment advisors hai unhe membership leni padegi us body ki. So if you remember I took one session where I talked about BSL. So that's this IASB which has been decided to function as a IASB for three years. So, Bombay Stock Exchange ki ek subsidiary thi jiske baare mein hamne discuss kiya tha BASL. So, filhaal teen saal ke liye usko as a IASB recognize kiya gaya hai aur wo as a IASB body aapke investment advisors ko regulate karegi, supervise karegi. So, BSC Administration and Supervision Limited, BASL which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Bombay Stock Exchange has been granted recognition from SEBI being a IASB entity for a period of three years starting 1st of June 2021. This has been covered in June week free PDF for the enrolled students and I have also taken a session in third week of June related to this thing. So if you don't remember or if you haven't watched that session, you can go through it. So if I move back to the question, we have already answered. The answer was option A. This was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.